surgical treatment for coronic ischemia. What are the indications for surgery in coronic limb ischemia? First of all, the ischemia should be severe, critical limb ischemia. How you know critical limb ischemia? As we mentioned before, raised pain, ischemic ulcers, appearance of minor gangrene. This is severe critical limb ischemia. And the patient may be need amputation at any time. Therefore, as a salvage procedure, we do surgical treatment. For the Arabic student, salvage procedure is انقاذ ما يمكن انقاذه انقاذ اللم نجحنا خلاص انقذنا اللم وعملنا انجاز فشلنا ما برضو الرجل هتتقطع في جميع الاحوال um, the operation should be successful or at least potentially successful how do you know that uh, operation is successful or potentially successful. Two things. The incoming blood from the proximal arteries above the obstruction should be good. Good blood flow from the proximal patent arteries. And good distal runoff Good distal runoff, the blood flow distal to the obstruction is good. Why? Because the blood flow in the distal arteries will carry this blood with nutrition and oxygen to the tissues. And if good blood from above the obstruction and good blood below the obstruction to the tissues, ischemia is nearly relieved without any bad effect um, in open surgery these are major surgery and therefore for major surgery particularly the patient should be fit for surgery in the past there are technical difficulties to manipulate the artery to open the artery to remove the obstruction, finally to close the artery. Therefore, in the past, uh, proximal arterial obstruction only for surgery. From the aorta to the end of obliteal. But nowadays, with optical magnification, or even by microsurgical technique, and with very fine sutures, we can operate vascular surgery in the small arteries of the leg also. Collidication is a relative indication. If the patient lost his job because he can't walk due to collidication, and this is the only source of money. And the patient insists and asks the surgeon to do surgery. We may be forced to do the surgery for this patient. But usually the surgeon asks the patient to change his job. It is better. Because uh, if the operation fails, this may lead to amputation and loss of the limb and if the patient can carry this risk to become fully walking and to do his job we are forced as a surgeon to do the operation for this patient due to insistence of the patient to do the operation um, what are the types of the operation for uh, this patient? Nowadays, 
there is a group of minor surgical techniques very safe uh, can be done for these patients under local anesthesia these groups of operations are called endovascular therapy endovascular therapy recent minor minimal invasive safe operative techniques radiologically guided depends on caster based technology um, what is the indication for endovascular therapy localized obstruction localized obstruction in the bus the localized obstruction is two centimeters but with progression of the techniques this localized obstruction becomes extended 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 until now localized obstruction within 12 centimeter in the past this operation was done only from aorta to obliteal but nowadays the technique can be done in the small arteries of the leg tibial and peroneal what are uh, these techniques first of all during angiography during DSA this intraarterial subtraction angiography during intraarterial digital subtraction angiography and under radiological control uh, we introduce a guiding wire into the lumen of the artery the caster is introduced from the skin introduced from the skin therefore it is called percutaneous to the lumen of the artery therefore it is called percutaneous transluminal the guiding wire is inserted into the lumen of the artery and passing through the obstruction along the guiding wire we introduce a caster with a deflated balloon then inflate the balloon inflation of the balloon will produce fissure of the aceroma in the aceroma rupture of the stenosed muscle fibers with dilatation of the artery and the lumen becomes the patent again for blood flow this technique is called percutaneous transluminal angioplasty percutaneous because we introduce the caster from the skin transluminal it is done through the lumen of the artery angioplasty we reconstruct the lumen of the artery and dilate the lumen of the artery and we correct the deformity and the narrowing and the stenosis in the artery therefore it is angioplasty the aceroma to avoid recurrence of stenosis and the enlargement of the aceroma and the stenosis usually we introduce an instrument to remove the aceroma mechanically or by laser technique we destroy the aceroma removal of the aceroma either mechanically or by laser is called acerectomy finally to avoid recurrence of the obstruction we introduce finally along the caster a collapsed stent and we inflate the stent into the lumen therefore this stent will keep the lumen patent to avoid recurrence of the astronoma or recurrence of the stenosis therefore endovascular therapy during 
digital subtraction and geography under a geological technique in front of the surgeon there is a monitor showing the vacancy of the artery and the obstruction site we introduce a balloon and inflate the balloon for dilatation called percutaneous transluminal angioplasty the abbreviation of uh, bear b trans t angiography a is bta it is called bta but uh, to remember between me and you just for remembering you can remember this abbreviation by beta beta but not uh, mention this uh, in front of the examiner BTA Bercutaneous Transluminal Angiography uh, for the Arabic student تفتكروها أو الناس العرب بكلمة باتا باتا دي وانا طفل صغير كده كان عندنا في مصر محلات أحذية مشهورة قوي 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 اسمها باتا كنا بقى كده هو في العيد وبتاع وحاجات زي كده لما تروح تجيب الجزمة بقى الحلوة قوي من باتا فتفتكروها بكلمة باتا اوكي um, after the humanal angioplasty a serectomy usually done followed by introduction of intravascular stent to keep the lumen vacant we should remember that endovascular therapy is actually nowadays becomes the main surgical treatment for patients with chronic limb ischemia and actually endovascular therapy bta a serectomy and the introduction of stent replacing open surgery in our practice therefore the main surgical treatment for mcq for patient with chronic limb ischemia surgically is endovascular therapy and the main endovascular therapy the first step which is pta percutaneous transluminal angioplasty um, this is uh, the endovascular therapy open surgery open surgery uh, is actually replaced nowadays by endovascular therapy but open surgery may be needed in certain cases as a salvage procedure and this operation never done for collocation to avoid loss of the limb if the technique is failed loss of the limb will be occurred if open surgery is done the main technique is bypass grafting and this will be discussed in detail in the next video thank you for good listening